We're going to find the inverse of this basic rational function, f of x equals x minus 1 divided by x plus 2. When we do all the algebra, it'll be a bit of a pain if we have to work with f of x just as a symbol. It's kind of a pain to write. So the first thing we'll do is rewrite this function as y equals x minus 1 divided by x plus 2. After rewriting the function with y instead of f of x, you'll typically want to switch the x's and y's. So where we see a y, we'll now put an x. And where we had x's, now we'll have y's. Now we just have to solve this equation for y. The primary reason that we do the sort of variable switch that we just did is so that when we're done, like I said, we're going to have some y equals x type of equation. That way, when we graph it, y will be the dependent variable and x will be the independent variable, just like normal. That's the primary reason to make this variable switch. To solve this equation for y, let's begin by multiplying both sides by y plus 2 to get rid of that denominator. That gets us here. We have x times y plus 2 equals y minus 1. Now we can distribute the x through those parentheses, and that gives us xy plus 2x equals y minus 1. Now we need to get all the y's on one side. We could bring them all to the left or to the right, doesn't matter. Let's subtract x, y from both sides. So we'll move all the y's to the right. And in the same step, let's add one to both sides to get rid of that negative one. When we do that, we'll now have two x plus one on the left. And on the right, we have y minus x, y. Now let's just flip the way we've written this equation so that the y's are on the left side. Still the same equation, we just put the y's over here. Now let's factor a y out of both of these terms. This has one y in it, this has negative x, y's in it. So if we factor out a y, we have y multiplied by 1 minus x. And this is equal to 2x plus 1 on the right side. At this point, we can divide both sides by 1 minus x to get y by itself on the left side. That gives us y equals 2x plus 1 divided by 1 minus x. And that's our inverse function. We can go ahead and write that up here, f inverse. The inverse function, which we've just found, turns out to be 2x plus 1 divided by 1 minus x, with, of course, the domain restriction that x cannot equal 1, since we can't have a division by 0. Now, the original function could never output a value of 1. x minus 1 divided by x plus 2 can never equal 1. So it shouldn't be surprising, since the original function can't output 1, the inverse function can't take an input of 1. And here is, since I'm sure you're curious, a graph of the situation. The blue curve is the original function, f of x. The green curve is the inverse function that we just figured out. And what you should notice is that the green function, the inverse, is a reflection of the original function across this line, which is the line y equals x. And graphically, that's how inverse functions work. The inverse of f of x, graphically, will be the reflection of f of x across the line y equals x, as we see here. Once more, to find the inverse function, all we did was replace f of x with y, then we swapped the x's and the y's, and then we just go through the process of solving for y. In the case of a rational function like this one, that required multiplying by the denominator, doing some distribution, then a little bit of factoring, and finishing off with some division, which requires us also to specify where our inverse function is not defined. Give it a try yourself. Here is a practice problem. Find the inverse of the function f of x equals x plus 3 divided by x minus 2. I'll put the solution on screen now. And here are the steps. Same exact process we just went through. The inverse function in this case turns out to be 2x minus 3 divided by 1 minus x. Again, this function can't output a value of 1, so it's no surprise the inverse can't take 1 as an input. 